Hey, it's Mike here, and today, coconut oil. Well, really, a funeral for the concept that coconut oil is a health food, or is healthy to consume at all, based on a pretty recent 2020 meta-analysis that looked at coconut oil consumption and LDL, or bad cholesterol. The study also investigated whether or not coconut oil was anti-inflammatory, as many people claimed. And well, short answer, coconut oil is over, but really there's more to it. All right, let's keep this brief, let's get going. In the past, I have referred to a few coconut oil studies, but they're really just single studies. And yeah, they did show things like coconut oil was pretty bad for LDL, but butter was worse, and that still stands today. But we didn't have a good, more rigorous study, so we have this systematic review and meta-analysis. It looked at a total of 16 studies, all of which had cholesterol numbers in them, and then it also looked at five that had inflammation numbers to aggregate. Okay, now for those results, when compared to non-tropical vegetable oils, coconut oil raised LDL, that bad cholesterol, by a statistically significant 10 milligrams per deciliter, and the research go on to say, quote, Therefore, coconut oil should not be viewed as healthy oil for cardiovascular disease risk reduction and limiting coconut oil consumption because of its high saturated fat content is warranted. Yeah, so it's, it's not looking good for coconut oil and heart health. Anyway, you might have seen that in that first quote, it raised HDL, that good cholesterol, by four points. Well, it did raise the bad cholesterol over twice as much, but you might be thinking, oh, so maybe it's worth it. It raises that good cholesterol, so I should keep eating it. The researchers clearly foresaw this train of thought and addressed the point with, quote, while coconut oil intake also increased HDL cholesterol concentrations, efforts to reduce cardiovascular disease risk by increasing HDL cholesterol have been unsuccessful. And I have a whole video on the research around that claim about HDL, and I will link it below. So in terms of the overall heart effects to all of those keto people who have been slamming MCT oil, which is saturated fat derived from coconut oil, or the bulletproof people who have been just scooping chunks of this stuff into their coffee. So I decided to let myself keep two comforts throughout this challenge for the next 30 days, bulletproof coffee and matcha. It's, it's not looking good for the heart, it's not. And again, to all the doubters, increased LDL is causally linked to heart disease. I mean, I don't know what you wanna say. Large fluffy LDL? No, also associated with increased risk of heart disease. Now to the topic of inflammation here. A lot of people have claimed, for whatever reason, that coconut oil is anti-inflammatory. And we can look to this Healthline article, which appears to make a pretty solid case, citing a lot of studies that it is anti-inflammatory, but the reality is three of those Yes, I said the reality is again, you can you can turn it into a drinking game if you want to, but it better be kombucha. <laughs> the reality is that three of those were animal studies. You know, they're on rodents. And then the last one, which was on humans, which they say the research isn't conclusive from, is not even on inflammation in particular. The study doesn't even mention inflammation. It doesn't look at classical inflammation markers. No, it just looks at one protein that's involved in the breakdown of blood clots. That's the closest that it gets. I don't know how they came to this conclusion from it. But back to our meta-analysis, which again looked at five studies that had inflammation readings, actual inflammation studies, and bad news for coconut oil, they found no inflammation benefit. They say there's no support for the claims that it alleviates inflammation or that it improves glucose homeostasis, show blood sugar control, or that it reduces adiposity or fat. I don't know why something that is literally pure fat, nine calories per gram would reduce fat anyway. And I know people are always like, oh, if it's extra virgin, cold expeller pressed, something magical, then everything is going to be okay. No, two of those studies looked at extra virgin coconut oil. It didn't help. Now for a little bit more detail on the LDL findings here. They have a forest plot, multiple forest plots in this study. And if you watched my Joe Rogan, Chris Kresser, James Wilkes video that talked about forest plots, went into great detail as to how to read them step by step. I will link that below as well. Here you can see the spread of the different studies that the meta-analysis looked at and the few studies that showed any negative trend that it might lower LDL. Well, those weren't statistically significant, but 10 of the studies showing that it increases LDL were statistically significant. And for a quick refresher, that confidence interval not touching the baseline value means that it was statistically significant. And then of course, the combined result was statistically significant that it raised LDL. And the study also looked at palm oil, which no, is also not a health food for many reasons. It is actually reasonably high saturated fat. Coconut oil is 90% and palm oil is 50%. And even then, the coconut oil raised LDL significantly more than palm oil. 
But I want to mention that we're seeing a 10 point LDL rise in a population that is still including animal fat in their diet, which absolutely raises LDL. So we have to imagine if you're taking somebody who's vegan here and then giving them coconut oil, that could be completely messing up their LDL cholesterol. And in so many cases, I've seen people be like, why is my cholesterol high on a vegan diet or not as low as I'd want it to be at least? And more often than not, not every time, but more often than not, it seems anecdotally to me, totally anecdotal, that it's because they have coconut oil in their diet. That was a sentence, but the point is, vegans tend to average LDL down around 70, maybe 80, and people who eat meat are up around 120. So there's a massive difference. And of course, if you're getting closer to that 120 as a vegan, there's probably something going on, but who knows? And for a final point on palm oil, it's not healthy for a ton of reasons. The same reason a lot of other oils are not healthy. They're 100% fat. It's refined fat. And they also, as I mentioned in my type two diabetes video, have a particular type of saturated fat that could contribute to those intramyocellular lipids that can cause type two diabetes. And palm oil just might be the worst oil for the environment because of its general association with the deforestation of the Sumatran rainforest and the murdering of orangutans. So you know, some of them say certified sustainable, but there's been some sketchy stuff around there as well. So I don't buy it literally. <laughs> Anyway, final point, you might be a little bit suspicious. Hey, was this funded by the canola oil industry or anything like that? No, it doesn't appear that there's any industry conflicts of interest here. It seems to be mostly academic and maybe they hit it like some of the recent meat industry studies have, like the Nutrarex one and, and Emma Derbyshire's choline paper. These people can be pretty snaky and I do not mean to insult snakes, sorry snakes. Okay, in the spirit of keeping things short, I am just a little amazed that people still can wrap their minds so easily around how refined sugar is not healthy, yet refined fats are somehow healthy. I don't know. Anyway, in this case, for our number one killer, heart disease, clearly it is not healthy. It raises LDL or bad cholesterol, which is causally linked to heart disease. So I don't think you should eat it. Anyway, make your own choice. Still not as bad as butter from what we know. And <laughs> finally, it's absolutely not anti-inflammatory. Good try though. Good try, random health blogs. All right, that's it for today. Let me know what you think about this new coconut oil information down below. But seriously, if you've had an experience on a vegan diet where coconut oil appeared to raise your LDL, let us know. I think we're all curious. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like it if you liked it, subscribe if you want, and I'll see you in the next video.